I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So, when you're ready. Okay, we're ready. Three, two, three, two, one. There we I go. Hit my mic. <laughs> That's fine. None of this makes it anyway. Oh, shit. Until I say that and then I just leave it in. Except the times that it does. Yeah, except the times it does, it doesn't. Yeah. All right. Um, I really need to like take this mic off and readjust it because it's been getting looser and looser progressively. Oh, I've um, got a crazy. Yeah. I customized it. Like I had to. I machined well, yeah. it a little bit, but like. I have a dope mic stand. You could, you could, you could drop kick this, and it would not budge. Except yeah, for mine, a little bit. Mine's from the days when I thought I wanted to have an articulating mic at my oh, daily driver. Oh yeah. Um, because it turns out I don't, because I don't use my <laughs> microphone enough. Fair. And fair. If I'm gonna use my microphone, yeah, I'm recording a podcast. Mm. So I need to be in a. At least semi acoustically sound room. Yeah, I mean, well, I have a I have a rather acoustically sound room. I mean, well, nobody else went... can see it, but I've got like, I've got sound coating on a couple walls. I've got the screen screen that's folded up right now, but that absorbs some stuff. I've got um, mm-hmm. a big like map that's on cloth. Um, yeah, like I've, I I did some sound treatment. I didn't. I put a bu- I have a bunch of transformers in this room. <laughs> you, you added more reflective surfaces. Yes. Yeah. So, if anything, I made it worse. So uh, I, I'm unaware if I told you this, and uh, it's probably a bad decision. But yes. But on Friday, I mm-hmm. uh, have been selected to give the speech for my company for you, National Manufacturing Day. So, you told me this. I have told you this. Okay. You told you told me personally. I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast. We haven't we haven't on the podcast. So they're <laughs> they're taking schools through where I work and it's my job to give a presentation on uh what it's like to be in engineering and convince the uh the forming minds of our generation uh that they want to be future engineers. So I'll well, say that's a bad decision on their part, but I will accept. Brandon, I also have a. There's also a problem with what you said. What's that? I get free pizza, so uh, worth it. Well, that that's good. But you said our generation. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's I think maybe. That ship, I think that ship has sailed <laughs> for both of us. I'm an optimist, but that ship has been sailed for a little bit now. I think. Uh, uh me. I, the day I walked out of a high school was the day that I left the generation. I mean. Like, I have random pains from just doing nothing now, which, I mean, that's fun. I get to talk with all the old guys about, uh, hey, what about our shoulders and backs? And uh, I have had I have had uh, back pain for 10 days straight <laughs> that I'm about uh, 90% sure is a kidney stone. I put in... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I put in a special request at work for a stand-up desk, and, uh... Oh, you're gonna be that guy. I'm gonna be that guy, and, uh, the only reason I'm not gonna get that is because it requires a doctor's note, and I don't feel like going to the doctors. That's fair. (laughs) That's actually, that's actually why I don't know why my, uh... Whether or not I have a kidney stone is because yeah. I just don't I don't feel like going to the doctor. Yeah, like I'll just deal with this. This will just that's my problem now, right? It's that's, like Yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. Like I emailed my boss like I want a stand up desk. I know there's like eight other people who have those. And then I got an email back from HR like, listen, that uh we can't just buy that, that you have to put in a, a rec for it and it requires <sighs> a uh and Americans with Disabilities Act uh, form. And, and in my head, I went, 
mm, I just I'm just gonna deal with it I'm t- right now I'm just that's my problem I'm not gonna lie the second I heard I need a wreck yeah <laughs> my 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 eyes glazed over and I'm yeah. just like that sounds like that sounds like somebody else's problem it's a process it's a process <laughs> uh yeah it, and it's designed for that and like I'm so I'm not gonna say who I work for or how mm-hmm. much they make but in my own mind, I'm like, if you make double digit millions a month, get me a desk. Just give me a desk. If I'm like, hey, I want a desk so I can stand up and my back's better, just just get me a desk. Uh, I, I do think you might have said it on Twitter though, but we don't have to go. I into mean, that. that's fine. I don't feel like Google. I'm not that. that guarded. I'm just a little bit guarded. I'm the opposite of guarded. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you Google my name, my name shows up on papers that I helped write. So <laughs> there's, I've seen one of oh, Google auto completed and associates. Yeah, well, you have to search John Dunham, uh, like my college name or something like that. Typically, okay. If you and search, if, there you are. Okay, found you. Yeah, if you search John Dunham RIT, I'm literally the first hit. Are you? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Or you search my company. You, I'm the first hit as well. Actually, I my read the docs is uh, up on uh, on Google if you Google it. Because I made – so back when I was, I was working on my resume, I totally made a read the docs for myself, which is, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, a programmatic way to write documentation. Yeah. Also – Yes. Also, I know we've talked about this in the the well, the the deep well that is me talking about my master's thesis, uh, of bits. Yeah, has been totally dried. But I'm up to a thousand ninety downloads of this. Holy thing. crap! Okay, that's more than I thought it would be. That's By way more than that's way more than I thought anyone would ever read it. And at least a hundred and forty eight people have viewed the abstract. Holy cow! That's upsetting. I mean, I'm on it right now, but I've only done it maybe twice, three times. That's fair. Holy cow. Yeah. Um. Oh, I don't think I talked about this on the last episode. Yeah. But Chuck Tingle's great. Chuck his, Tingle his, is amazing. His covers are amazing. They're like, oh, uh, like this, this, the name of this title. This is all I'm going to say about Chuck Tingle. But it's my husband and I find find our unicorn, and she's a Bigfoot. Also, my husband is a dinosaur. You, okay, so you, I forget what day this was. I'm going to say Saturday. It I was received, like a Saturday. Um, several just screenshots of Chuck Tingle covers mm-hmm. with no context behind them nope. at all. And it was like, just so you know, I did forward those to several people. <laughs> just like. Guess what this is? That's the correct answer. Honestly, man, my my camera keeps dumping. Um, that's absolutely the correct answer because there's no other option for that. It's not it's even bizarre. a little bit. It's it's it will shake you. Yeah, to your core. To be totally honest, I mean, it's creepier than anything I've researched for this show for sure. Like. It's the most uh, uh, shocking thing of all of it is on erotic the, on the bottom of some of them. It says pure surprise nominee. Oh, so I did some research into that. Yeah. It's actually really shitty. Oh, is it? Okay. I, I don't know if he was involved in it, but there's a group that may, uh, there's a group that has been like, that has been like messing with the Hugo awards because they don't want, people of color and people of like oh here you go okay. lgbtq yeah. stuff to be considered in it and they just want oh. white males i so, mean that took the joy from that away a little bit a little bit yeah well i mean i'm sorry i had it oh man i just blew my levels i'm sorry <laughs> i have to take that that joy away because I don't want I don't want someone to listen to me talking about Chuck Tingle and think that I'm okay with any of that kind of stuff. That's 100% fair. I <laughs> You called them tinglers. 
Like, I didn't call them tinglers. You, I didn't call them. I got a text from you, and you called them tinglers. Yeah, I, I didn't there. call them that. I didn't call them that. You called them that. The website called them tinglers. That's kind of worse. That that is who that's who called them that. It, they, the website called oh, them tinglers. Man. Also, compilations of them are the yeah. same price as like one of them. So it's very bizarre. I mean, that's cost effective. I mean, they're cheap on their own, at least on Kindle, like two bucks. Hell yeah, get a tingler. I think one of them was like ten. Oh, he's trying to make but, bank. But here's the thing: I yeah. really, really, really don't want my my Amazon suggestions to start suggesting <laughs> me Chuck Tingle stuff because it's already hard enough. If I buy a manga, I get like every other manga in the series recommended to me, and I just don't need that. So I'm still upset. You sent me a link that I clicked on, and that's just in my cookies now. Uh, mm-hmm. Luckily, I, I, I have no ads based on that, but still, <laughs> like, well, I guess. This is my cookies. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, that's how I live my life. Yeah. <laughs> I live my life one bad cookie to the next. That's, I mean, you're living on the edge. Mm-hmm. Hardcore. I mean, that's the that's the best way to live, to be totally honest. <laughs> it, it, it is. Um, so I guess uh, for those who are unaware of us at the moment, uh, welcome. Weird episode to start on. Yeah, weird, very weird one to start on. Uh, episode 53, I'll call it Season 2, Episode 1. Um, yeah, that's probably fair. Welcome to Cryptopedia. It is an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, flo- f- folklore, and the uh, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John, and mine is a black cat. Who will not let me sleep. Mine is a spider the size of a bear, but also it can fly. Ah, well, you got yourself a tarantula dactyl there. There, I was on my my uh, daily walk at work, and I was thinking about things that were scary, and uh, flying spider bears, top of the list. S- I think I'd befriend it. Sec- I'd try to befriend it. Second on the list, I looked on my shoulder, and there was a, a grasshopper that was just on my shoulder, and that was uh, rather scary. I think it was trying to bug me. It was pretty intimidating, but uh, it mm. got off eventually. I mean, the thing that scares me the most is the fact that my the campus at my job has these like fake coyotes that are like what? in various states of disrepair. I was unaware of this. Oh, yeah, I didn't tell you about that. Yeah, no. they're trying to scare off the geese. <laughs> um, I'm like 90% sure I've seen a geese, a goose walk up to it, so. We have at work a goose problem, a bald eagle mm-hmm. problem, and a peacock problem. They do nothing. We put up a security gate. Peacocks don't <laughs> listen. They don't listen to security like, at listen, all. Listen. They just go under I, honest, the gate. Honestly, I don't know what's worse of the things you listed. Because geese are are mean little bastards, but peacocks don't care. So geese poop everywhere. That's fine. I can step around poop no matter how much there is. Peacocks don't sound cute at all. You just hear from out. Oh, no. Like, I'm inside. I'll be by the window or whatever. Here, just like, ah, ah. And it's it's not great. It's Especially very, if it's, it's like a season. human screaming. It sounds like a human screaming. <laughs> it is the worst. Very yeah, it distracting. Sounds, it sounds great. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd say the only thing, there's only two things that come close to it. Yeah. Um, That I think I personally heard. I don't okay. know if I heard the, the second like one. Like an actual human scream? Uh, No, no, that's that's not that bad. Um. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, mountain lion screams. Oh, that's bad. I've heard those. Uh, that's bad. Yeah, that's like a woman wailing. Mm-hmm. Um, and coyotes. Coyotes are spooky. Yeah, you don't. Well, the problem is the problem is in the area that we grew up in. Uh, it wasn't unusual for us to be outside in the dark. No, not at um, all. And if you heard those coyotes, you knew. You best, yeah. you best get somewhere safe because they will mess you up. If they, they think they can take you. Uh, so I was never afraid of coyotes. I was afraid of what coyotes would do 
to just house pets. So that's yeah. what you've got to deal with. Uh, mm -hmm. My neighbors had a uh, a couple boa constrictors and a very loud chihuahua. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it would bark at maybe three in the morning. And one day it got quiet. And we thought, maybe the boa got the chihuahua. Because they came over and said, it got out. It didn't. Sort of something worse is that they told us they found it in their couch after three days. So what could be scarier than knowing you had a boa in your couch oh, for three days? That's fun. Yeah. That's yeah. scary. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. All right. Well, <laughs> let's get into the actual thing this episode. Okay. It's, it's definitely not. It's definitely not. Uh. Hidden boa constrictors. Although, no, the opposite. Actually, pet lo lost pets that become large in like sewers. That's definitely an episode. That right? could definitely be an episode. Like that's that definitely like one. the oh yeah, like sewer gators. Sewer gators is definitely an episode. Oh yes. Uh, so you can probably guess this because we've talked about it in the past. Uh, rare one where I'm trying to tie my episode into your episode. But today's yep. creature is humanoid in appearance. It was originally seen. Around 1966, it roams Virginia and is still seen today. Do you have any guesses on what it could be, given that you probably already have the copy open and it's the title? I don't have the copy open yet. No, okay, but, it's in the folder. But I do know what it is because I was the person who suggested it. It was your idea. Yeah, not going <laughs> to lie. It was your idea. Uh, it's it's a, This one's going to be Indrid Cold. It is. It is Indrid Cold. Uh, this time you guessed it without your black magic powers. Uh, yeah, well, I, I guessed it with my, my black magic cheating. You Yeah, that counts. You did, yeah. Yeah. Um, Real quick before we start, I yes. don't see it in the episode. It's called Injured Cold. It is called Injured Cold. I will say uh, move to my drive. Everyone can know my file path. That's fine. Broadcasted. Move. And yeah, okay. but no one's... Unless we give them right access to the the files they'll never know they will never know so it's in there sort by uh date uploaded because i just added it to okay. it again uh all right let me let me re relog in a drive okay good we should uh we should probably cut this we can i mean as soon as we say we should cut something i leave it in so that's just <sighs> how it is i guess all right i'm not seeing it can you send me a link like on <laughs> skype uh okay so how oh i'm an old man i'm a very okay. old man all right so you gotta click you gotta this is this is riveting podcasting Get shareable by the way. link Sharing, um, i'm gonna click yep, yep. to turn it on uh-huh i'm gonna copy and now i have all to, right grandpa so now, now I click control on, c i click on the picture of the chat box and then i will yep. control v yep yep paste and there we go <laughs> Okay, there we go. Hopefully, I turned sharing on. The button is green. I can see it. I can see okay. it. Okay. <laughs> we did it. We did okay. it. I'm going to save this. I'm going to make a copy of this so I have it. <laughs> oh, it's in broadcasted, so I guess I was having I problems. did put it in there. I did. Okay, who's the grandpa now? Who's the grandpa I mean, now? To be fair, uh, to be fair, yeah, you're still the grandpa. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Okay. <clears throat> so this creature, which just so people know, to the extent of which we're looking at the same thing by your green cursor, uh, is described as looking like a typical human, a male, um, about my age, and grinning with a jacket on, which is why he is dubbed the Grinning Man. First off. <laughs> During the time period where Injured was encountered, another entity overshadowed him. During the same time, in the same area, Mothman had just come into the public eye, and this creature uh, took a back seat to the Mothman. See Cryptopedia episode 52. Uh, Which, uh, yeah. let me just say, Mothman is definitely popular. He, Mothman's lit. That, uh, you <laughs> sent me a text, and he's uh, kicking off. Uh, so... Mothman, the Mothman episode and the Mothman subject matter is way more, uh, has way more of a draw than I ever thought it would. Uh, cause it even applies to this podcast. We got 195 downloads in a week. 
because yeah. of Mothman. Yeah, That's rub it in. Bonkers. Why don't you rub it in? Why don't you? I see how it is. Oh, I'm John. I my I'm more popular. I see how it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, although <laughs> although if we look at the numbers, most most of the time you're the one who has the higher numbers per week. That's so. right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that's this has just become a pissing contest. Is oh yeah, this is. best contest ever. Uh, so first seen in 1966 by uh, Woodrow Wilson Derenberger, born in 1916 and died in 1990. He had the following story. Told by Susan Shepard to Mysterious Universe. Uh, I, I gotta just point out, Darren yeah. Berger is such a weird name. It's a weird name. Real like, guy, because I did check if he actually existed. Oh, no. No, he's real. super existed. He's real. Totally he, existed. You know how I know he existed? How did he exist? Because uh, Keel talked about him a lot in the Mothman Prophecies. Yeah. And uh, I don't think Keel has enough of an imagination to come up with a person whole cloth who seems like a person oh yeah well he also like did a television interview where there's screenshots played over the live audio but i couldn't find the actual like i mean again like it, this is I, older so I'm, i don't expect yeah. to fully get a recorded tv interview but he's out there like he's a yeah. real guy i mean everything before the 80s is pretty much hit or miss whether or not you have a copy of it because oh, yeah. a lot of it was to, was broadcasted once, and then the tapes were overwritten. Yeah, it's so, uh, yeah, that happened to Doctor Who. So uh, I guess I'll put several. us in the same category. Yeah, it's just as <laughs> it's just as culturally important as the first Doctor episodes that got lost to the ages. Oh yeah, which they did find eventually in India, just on spools. So they just have them again now, sort of a little bit. Some got recorded over, some didn't. So that's amazing, actually. Yeah, that's actually pretty dope. Uh, so his name was Woodrow Derenberger, but everyone called him Woody. It was shortly after 6 p.m. in the evening when Woody Derenberger was driving home from his job at a sewing machine factory uh, at J.C. Penney's in Marietta, Ohio, to his farmhouse in Mineral Wells, West Virginia. Population less than 2,000. The ride home was overcast and dreary, uh, and it was misting a light rain. So is this the is this what what's her name was saying, uh, Susan Shepard, or did you look up the weather? This is so the weather is what Susan Shepard did. There were I've got okay. a bunch of sources at the bottom. A lot of them said the exact same stuff, so I stuck with Susan Shepard as okay. a uh, a primary. And so I'm, uh, ass I'm assuming that it's a, a copy and paste situation. Close, yeah. Like I went in, found, yeah. Like if there's anything that. Um, she seemed like she did, of the places I sourced, the most legwork. So I did some addition to and subtraction from, and a lot of not adding from other places, because it seemed rather shady. Well, Brandon, Intercold yeah. Cold is a, is, a, is a alien story. It so, is. Yeah. Obviously, Injured Cold is going to be a lot of shady stuff. Like, there are more sources that I did not add than I did. Yeah, that's <laughs> like yeah a lot. And there were. I'm gonna lot. assume. I'm gonna assume at least ninety percent of those were green text. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. That's very fair. That's extremely fair. No, I, 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 I researched Mothman. Yeah. <laughs> so she, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll just keep reading. But she didn't really add any flair to it. There was some stuff that she clearly had in. Uh, she put in herself that didn't seem like it was just adding for the sake of adding that there was uh sourced uh like she got it from actual sources that's where okay. it seemed um there's a lot more and i'll tell you uh towards the end that just people say with nothing to support oh yeah no no oh oh i know like, oh, oh my god i do there are <laughs> So this is just him. I'll say up front, just Woody Derenberger talking about injured cold. There are at least uh, five other uh, places where people say there are additional injured cold settings with nothing to support it. And also like probably yeah. not injured cold, like just super loose. If my memory of the story and 
I don't want to cut you. I don't want to steal your thunder. If yeah. my memory of the story is correct, only Woody saw injured cold during the initial sightings. Yeah. Yeah. There are other, th- like, other people have taken things that sounded very loosely like injured cold and just applied it to him and said, yeah, here's another injured setting. And I went, mm, no, no, definitely not. That how pe- You're there basically re- describing Mothman. Yeah, there were re- lots of people reaching for a lot of straws. Uh, so as Sternberger came up on the intersection of I-77 and Route 47, he thought that a tractor trailer was tailgating him with its lights on, which was, uh, to him, quite unnerving. So he swerved to the side of the road, and much to his surprise, the truck appeared to take flight and seemed to roll across the panel of his truck. Uh, to his astonishment, what Darren Berger thought was a truck was a charcoal-colored UFO without any lights on. It touched down and then hovered about 10 inches above the berm of the road, where, uh, much to Deber- Darren Berger's surprise, a hatch opened and a man stepped out looking like any ordinary well in quotes any ordinary man you would see on the street there was nothing unusual about his appearance listen you flash your lights that means i've got to beat you it's a gang initiation thing i know but if i don't do this clay czar is gonna be real cross with me i mean the reason for pinks at the moment that's what's going on oh yeah no that that's exactly what's going on reason for pinks he's got his, his high beams off he's got his lights off he's waiting for the flash he's just waiting for that flash yeah <laughs> yes which also, uh, not a real thing, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> the man was dressed in dark clothing and had a, quote, beaming smile as the man proceeded to walk towards Derenberger's panel truck with the, quote, craft uh, jetted up about 40 feet in the air or floated above the highway. What happened next was unsettling because as the darkly dressed man came up towards the vehicle, Woody Derenberger heard the words, Do not be afraid. I mean you no harm. I only want to ask you a few questions. Do you know how fast you were going? (laughs) Yeah. Do you know why I pulled you over today? (laughs) What do you have in your hands? (laughs) It's that, move slowly. (laughs) It's, uh, I've got some quotes from people we were in the car with that I Um, couldn't repeat. Oh my God, that. (laughs) And I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, one time. (laughs) One time. Many moons ago, uh, we were driving yeah. from a Friday Night Magic that got out at like what two a.m. one a.m. This yeah, was late, pretty early. Yeah, this is this. Well, yeah, pretty early. Uh, so we're going back through a back road because that's the only way I knew how to go. And uh, I, I I'm turning left, and I thought, oh crap, did I forget the signal or something along those lines? Because cops whooped right behind me. They pull me over. I'm literally panicking at this point because I've never been pulled over by a cop before. (laughs) Uh, And it's I have a car full of 20 early 20 somethings. Yes. Plus one not so early 20 something. Uh, And the cops walk up next to the side of the car and they're like, hey, uh, do you know I pulled you over? I'm like, no, I legitimately don't. And he's like, yeah, you got a taillight out. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, license registration, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're, you're far away from my home. And then as he's like looking at it, the other cop is looking through the window and he sees one of, one of the people in the car with his hands in his lap. And, uh, <laughs> when asked what he had in his lap, he said, my dick. <laughs> yeah, it's, what do you have on your hands? My dick. <laughs> it was a hundred- uh, Appropriate response. Appropriate response. <laughs> yeah, but not the response you say to two cops at 2 a.m. No. In a car, with a car full of 20-somethings. There's full of 20-somethings with just backpacks. Yeah. I mean, they were filled with magic cards, but still, yeah. it's a car full of 20-somethings with backpacks. Yeah. Um. Then they super troopered me. Mm-hmm. They did. <laughs> like, they pulled next to you, and they <laughs> rolled down the passenger side window and went... D, D, D. <laughs> so, I thought I was going to get pulled over again. <laughs> you did. To be totally honest. And then we get to we get to the location we we're going to, which happened to be a Taco Bell because it's 2 a.m. Where are you going to go for food? Yes. Um, And our one friend who has been mentioned on this podcast before, but will not be named, named here for the sake of preserving his honor, uh, 
he uh, he said, oh, yeah, I was going to tell you about that. Because he had been driving <laughs> behind me the whole way up to the Magic, Magic oh, the Gathering God. thing. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, I had a spare in my car. <laughs> also, uh, fun fact, not the first time that the cops just rolled up on a group of nerds. Because we used to play on oh, yeah. the street. You know what street I'm talking about? We used to play yep, on yep, the yep. street where it's like, that's the street where stuff happens. And then would go mm-hmm. get food at the place it where stuff is. happens. Yep. And then uh, it'd just be a group of like people in their 20s. <laughs> On the street corner, in the spot where things happen, making hand-to-hand transactions, cops don't know where trading magic cards. <laughs> it's just like, on a couple <laughs> occasions, you're like, hey, what you doing? And we're just like, it's it's just way sadder than you think it is. Like, it's uh, way worse than you uh, think I it was, could ever be. It's magic cards. <laughs> I was always, I've always been the least, like, take risks, take chances things. Yeah. But I ended up in some weird situations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, clearly, like, we've been in spots where, co- like, we've been approached by the police, and they're like, so, uh, what kind of, uh, sort of drug hand-to-hand transactions are you making? And we're like, look into our bags. It is Magic the Gathering cards. <laughs> they're just like, yep. oh, uh, we didn't expect this. At this time, and specifically this spot, you guys have fun. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. <sighs> oh, man. <clears throat> Those were the days. Now we're uh, old. Hey, <laughs> now I can play Magic on my computer and I don't have to leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I started buying Magic the Gathering cards again because I'm like, I'm going to play Magic again. And oh, then yeah. I found out that Magic Arena came out because yeah. it was in the pack of cards that I bought. And I'm like, oh, screw this. I'm going to play Magic Arena. Oh, yeah. No, Magic <laughs> Arena is amazing. I've also had people over and they're like, hey, so you just like want to watch TV till maybe 10, then go to bed like pretty early? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds actually like really dope right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. The, uh, so, um, segues, except the man was dressed in dark clothing and had a beaming smile as the man proceeded to walk towards Darren Berger, uh, I'm not even gonna say his name again, I know I said this, like, one sentence ago, anyway, just call him Woody from now on, yeah, Woody, he saw a guy, looked totally normal, except for the whole spaceship thing, that thing went 40 feet in the air where it floated above the highway. What happened next was unsettling because the darkly dressed man came up towards Woody's vehicle and he heard the words, do not be afraid. I mean, you no harm. I only want to ask you a few questions. Woody did become afraid because as the man spoke to Woodrow, his lips did not move. The man then moved towards the opposite side of the truck and told Darren Berger to roll his window down so they could talk better, which he did. Uh, next, what formed in Darnberger's mind uh, were the words, Now you can speak or you can think. It makes no difference. I can understand you either way. This so, is what the dark man said. Yes? So I've heard this story before. And like one of the things that I don't remember who talked about this. I think it was Mysterious Universe, actually. Yeah. Um, They talked about this and like their whole because they, they come from a they come from a position of um belief okay whereas we come from a position of skepticism yeah like that we we come from different we approach these different types of stories in different ways yeah um so from their perspective this is an entity a higher order entity observing us and then getting things close to right but not quite right okay but the less the more skeptical view of this is a guy is trying to think of what something what would be weird if something did something, right? Yeah. Like or it's the human brain filling in blanks or creating something that is the opposite of what you anticipate. So like I'm not saying he had hallucinations, but if you were to have hallucinations, it wouldn't be surprising that they behave weird cuz like when I have dreams True. When I have dreams, things are slightly off. 
Yeah. But they are close enough that it almost makes logical sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So, to me, this is more dream state, as, like, more of a dream state thing than it is a actual physical entity thing. My cat this morning, so I forgot what the mm-hmm. dream was about. I was having a pretty decent dream, mm-hmm. and uh, I woke up because my cat, <clears throat> she don't see so well and don't jump mm-hmm. so well. So I woke up to the sound of a half-blind cat jumping off the bed onto the floor, which sounded an awful lot like a grown man stomping into the bedroom, <laughs> and it scared me so bad. That's ter- that's terrifyingly fair, and cats are louder than you think. They are, and poop stinkier than you think. Mm, Especially really if you have a very well-insulated house. Uh, yes. So later, when Darren Berger was uh, questioned on local live television, he was scrutinized over what seemed to be a contradiction, because if the dark man communicated through a type of mental telepathy, why would Darren Berger need to roll his de- roll his window down to talk? Wouldn't it be easier just to talk mentally? In response, Woody explained that it was because Injured Cold wanted to look directly at him as they spoke, and he felt that, really, Cold wasn't so interested in uh, what was said, but more interested in keeping communication with him. Now, I'm going to pause right here and say, shouldn't your windows just be clear? Why couldn't you just look through a window like that? Uh, I'm not buying this, that part. Th- this this could be like, like, okay. So the fact that he comes from vision saying that he knows what Indrid Cold wanted yeah. is sus to say the least. But if you're coming from a position of belief... You could potentially explain this away as he observed creatures on Earth doing the roll down the window thing. Yeah. Okay. But like I can I can under like see the thing is you can make the argument, but that you're projecting a bit though. If you're making the assumption that uh, Indrid, uh, well, cold because he was never called Indrid cold. He was just only called cold, and I'm not sure where Indrid came from. But it seems to like you're someone would be projecting to say that he had witnessed similar actions before and therefore tried to uh, have them happen again. Thank you for adjusting your camera, because it was a lot like watching um, Tool I, Time. I, it's like You're like the neighbor from Tool Time. Every time you record, I see like the top half of your eyes up. <laughs> well, I need a better I need a better camera, because this one's like got that like weird yeah, like bendable figure thing. Uh-huh. But yeah, I mean... <sighs> That's that's kind of the problem with most of these stories, though, because like, yeah. it, it's such a leap of, leap of faith and a leap of logic, um, in most cases. Because, like, for example, Mothman, right? There's so many things you can explain it away with before giant Mothman, mm-hmm. right? There's so many Occam's Razor th- moments that you can have. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Ropin. Same thing with all of these creatures that exist like Grafton monster. Um, the only, like, you know, there's only a handful where I say, okay, I don't have an obvious answer for this. And I have to make a leap of logic to come up with any kind of response to what it could be. Right. Like, but I can only count those on one hand from even the episodes we've done. Mm. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, so to Darren Berger, or Berger, I'm really not sure how to say his name. I'll say Woody most of the time, unless I don't. Um, let's just say, let's just say Woody. I'm going to control F. <laughs> I'm about to control <laughs> F and just replace control all F the Darren replace Burgers. all Darren Berger with uh, Woody. Okay, so it seems that the entire point of it all, uh, Woody also noted that when Cold stared into his eyes, that it was as if he knew everything about Woody, and also if he could only let go of his fear and do the same he felt that uh, he would also know and understand all of Cold. In any event, Cold spoke through the passenger side window the entire time. That's kind of uh, weird. The physical description of Cold is commonplace. Uh, Woody described him as about 35 years of age, having a trim build, and being about 6 feet tall, 185 pounds, uh, with dark eyes and dark hair slicked straight back. So, um... That's 100% less racist than how... Keel described the men in black. It is, I will say, um, <laughs> basically, me with black hair is uh, injured cold. Me with black pretty much, hair. yeah, pretty much a little, a little bit older. He's he's a little older and ten pounds uh, heavier, but yeah. 
we're about the same. So uh, pretty much, yeah, if pretty any, much. If anyone follows me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands, uh, there you go. You've got yourself a blonde injured cold. Yeah, have you been dyeing your hair injured cold? No. Should I go all black? Should I dye it jet black? No, I'm. Okay, so you're. I guess you're not. Wait, are you though? Could you be injured cold? Because you just totally didn't get the joke I was laying down. <laughs> I did not. And still don't. <laughs> I was assuming that you were injured cold. Oh, I am. Can't tell by how much I smile. It's a visual that, joke, everybody. Yeah. It works really good in podcast form. So oh, is yeah. explaining jokes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Explaining jokes is the best. Uh, cold wore a long, dark coat. And beneath the coat, uh, what he was able to glimpse a fabric of his, quote, uniform that glistens beneath. Uh, he also described Cold as having a tanned complexion. Uh, so I guess that does not meet me because I am uh, the whitest person um, as one. You don't, you don't, you, I have never in my life seen you tan. Uh, you just burst into red. If that's, a hundred, I go from bleach to burnt. And that's yeah. not an exaggeration. In uh, high school, I was called Elmer several times for the glue. And, uh, yeah. That's fair. Uh, I'm just very white. I did a 23 in me thinking I'd find out some cool stuff. And it turns out I'm just eight kinds of white. Yeah. I, I would. That doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. It's, I, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, mostly, uh, uh, just name anywhere in Europe. That, that's me. Um, <laughs> throughout the conversation, uh, Cold kept a frozen smile and continuously hid his hands beneath his armpits most of the time. Kind of like he's cold. That Saturday Night Live skit, which I think is pretty funny. Which one? The one where it was um, shoot, they had that movie where it was like uh, like Jesus Christ rock star or something. She keep keep her arms under her armpits like black hair this was from this is an old like 15 years ago i i don't remember this bit i it's, i didn't watch a lot of set i was never really big into saturday night live to be totally honest i mean it was on so i watched it that's fair <laughs> cold did however point at the city lights above the distant hills uh of uh oh shoot parkersburg and asked woody what do you call that over there and woody said why that's Parkersburg, and we call that a city. And Cold responded, where I come from, we call that a gathering. Cold later added the uh, curious statement that I come from a place less powerful than yours. As the men talked, cars passed onto the craft, which drifted above the road, and the occupants were seemingly unaware of the spaceship that was there. After all, there were no lights that could be seen. Cold then asked about Parkersburg, saying, quote, do people live there or do they work there? Woody uh, replied saying, why, yes, people live and work there. Cold interjected, do you work, Mr. Derenberger? And uh, Woodrow, to <coughs> Woodrow told Cold his name as the conversation began. So wait a yeah. second. Yes. Um, okay. There's like three to four things in this that don't make any sense. Okay, just four. I'll accept it. Uh, so one, first of all, um, one, the fact that he calls it a gathering makes me feel like, so this is 66, the, the heyday of, uh, 1950s alien movies have come out and come and gone. Yes. I feel like that's come up in at least one of the terrible alien movies I've watched while watching Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh, and 100%. I've, I've watched yeah. a lot. Um, two... I come from a place less powerful than yours is really weird. And it sounds yeah. like somebody imagining what an alien would say to lie to you about their mm. power level. Yes. Uh, three. Did nobody see Woody just sitting there and just, like stop and just say, talk, well, I mean where we live, if you see, he just, a car on its own and someone outside talking to nobody you're like I'm sure they're having a good time and you just keep going that's true but this is west virginia i feel like west virginia has more busy bodies than we do we're new yorkers true. we we just it brandon me minimizing the level of interaction i can have in a supermarket is a good day 
I saw someone, uh, like, like someone collapsed and was dragged away by an ambulance and nobody said anything. It was just on the sidewalk. Welcome to New York. Yeah. Like, nobody was like, <laughs> what's going on or anything like that. You're like, that happened. So, you know what the weather's going to be like tomorrow? I think it's going to be pretty nice. I'm not sure, though. Maybe cloudy. Like, um, do you, do you want to get some like I don't know, apples yeah. or something? <laughs> I, uh, Let's. You want to go with, like apple picking or get uh some Dallas hot wieners or something? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just I just want to get away from here for a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's uh yeah that's that's what we're at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so Woody answered, "Quote: I'm a salesman. That's what I do." Do you have a job? And Cold answered, yes, I'm a researcher. After- a searcher, Brandon. Oh, a, sur- searcher. a searcher. Woo. A right. searcher. A yeah, he's, yeah. is he like Starscream or something? He's like almost a seeker. He may, maybe. I don't want to put us in a spot where anybody does a scar- Starscream uh, impression. Oh, I, I can't. I'm not going to do it. Don't, because it's not good. <laughs> I was pausing, waiting for it. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> after that, the conversation became mundane, which is weird if you're talking to an alien. Uh, yeah. Cold seemed to notice that Woody was scared and commented on it, saying that, quote, Mr. Derenberger claimed Cold that I just don't get that sound. Well, whatever. Yeah. He asked, why are you so afraid? Do not be afraid. We do not mean you. Or we mean you no harm. Will, will you see that we eat and bleed the same as you do? And then Megatron! Added, God damn it. God damn I knew it was coming. Megatron! Yeah. That, uh, neither of those were good. No. They were both terrible. They were mine was even bad. worse because I, I don't even know if mine picked up on the freaking <laughs> recording, to be totally honest. Oh, no, it did because it uh, hurt my ears. <laughs> oh, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> yeah, look at your waveform. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. We only wish you happiness, which Colt said to the frightened man uh, more than once. Uh, while Mr. Woody uh, was being interviewed on live television by WTAP-TV, he attributed this puzzling statement to injured Cold, saying that, quote, at the proper time, the authorities will be notified about our meeting, and this will be confirmed. The entire conversation took between five and ten minutes, and then injured Cold looked inside Woody's car uh, with his ever-present smile and said, quote, Mr. Derenberger, I thank you for talking to me. We will see you again. He ended the conversation Uh, saying we'll see you again and as soon as he did the spaceship immediately came back floated again about 10 inches off the road a hatch opened and a human armed extended pulling cold into the craft the ship uh yeah what uh yeah i mean you could probably have said that like 30 times by now i did who dares disrupt my coronation starscream said that are you are you just looking up starscream quotes are you just looking up quotes right now by the Starscream? That's a yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Perhaps you're just made of shoddy materials, Megatron. They uh Decepticons, feast your eyes on your new leader. You seem so happy and I'm so sad at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just stand there. Do something. Your new leader orders you to slay Megatron. Oh, man. I can hear the... Oh, I can hear the unsubs right now. <laughs> uh, if... if Yeah? Go Finish it. Finish if it. If you've made it this far and you subbed and you didn't know this, well... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh. You betrayed me. Oh uh, yeah, was that was that one worth it? That was worth it. It was, was it? You've got a big smile. That I'm was... so happy every time I can say. <laughs> uh, time makes things all possible. I can wait. In your absence, someone had to take command. Um, yes, right then, solemn face, solemn face. Okay. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, 
John did give a speech at our graduation and quote Optimus Prime. So transform and roll out. This is this is, like this is what you get. I don't know what you expected. <laughs> Honestly, the first half of the speech was about uh, Dr. Emmett Brown as well. Yeah, and about time travel. Yeah, because <laughs> I was salutatorian, which means I could I got to t- talk about the future. Yes, you did. So I went back to the future, to the God. the mystical far off land of two thousand six. <laughs> Actually, two thousand five. Sorry. Oh yeah, a class that liked everyone so much. We were gonna have a reunion, and then it got canceled because nobody wanted to show. <laughs> I didn't know that it got canceled. Yeah, no, that got canceled, man. <laughs> They're like, hey, there's been no feedback. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ship then jutted up into the air about 75 feet, made a fluttering noise, then shot away at a very high rate of speed. For a few moments, for the ah, words, for a few moments, Woody sat stunned. Finally, he started up his car and drove to his farmhouse in Mineral Wells, where his wife met him at the door, and by now it was 7 o'clock. Miss Derenberger met her husband at the door. She later said that Woody, quote, could not have been any whiter if he had been lying in a coffin, so I guess... We share same ancestry. The mm-hmm. stories vary, but from Miss Der- or sorry, Mister Derenberger's account, his wife is the one who called the West Virginia State Police, or at least dialed the phone. Woody gave them a brief report of what he claimed uh, to have happened. It was later interesting to note that in the initial report, Woody called the alien cold, but did not mention Indrid until much later. Almost as though he came up with that name at a later date. Almost? Yes. Almost as though he came up with that name at a later date. Which he did. Uh, The next day, Woody attempted to go back to work, but was sidetracked when he agreed to give a live television interview about his experience on the previous night with a UFO on WTAP-TV, the NBC affiliate in Parksburg, housed in a small building not much bigger than a garage. The interview took place shortly before noon, which, by the way, the audio is available if anyone wants to listen to. Um, It's pretty boring. I mean, you can. Uh There's no visuals. Yeah, I mean, I assumed it would be pretty boring because, like, you could probably taste the the dullness, the loudness of taste. Wow, I just did three senses in one one statement. Yeah, <laughs> so you can probably hear the loudness of the ties. Oh yeah, through the audio, it, it's probably deafening to be totally honest. I can do some fancy tie knots. Uh, I didn't when I went to the wedding because, like, there was reasons for doing a uh, that kind of knot. It, oh, whatever. But I used to do. Like, I used to wear ties to work, and mm-hmm. I'd do, like, a tr- I don't remember what it's called. It was so fancy. You know what I wear? I wore to work today? What? Jeans, my uh, Optimus Prime t-shirt, the yellow oh, one. Oh, man. Um, yeah. And uh, a hoodie that I got from uh, Vancouver. I'm so jealous. Like, I wear button-ups <laughs> and, like, fancy pants. Like oh. I gave up. I gave up. Most of my Most of my team's in India, so... <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> the uh, the interview took place shortly before noon, where Woody was grilled by veteran reporter Glenn Wilson and city police chief Ed Plum, as well as other name. local uh, law enforcement. He, that's like uh, Clue. That's a solid Clue name, Ed Plum, it, Professor Plum. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, that would be what it'd be. Something like that. Yeah. Some alliteration. Oh, yeah. Colonel Mustard. So uh, representatives from Wright-Patterson were en route to the interview where Woody uh, was there, but uh, whether that came out is not known. The interview went on for about two and a half hours. What? Yeah. Long interview. The live for part a five-minute bro- <coughs> conversation? Yeah. The live part of the broadcast was under an hour long, and then television cameras were turned off, and the interview continued off the air for another hour or so. Long interview! During that time, Woody drew a picture of the spacecraft, which he described uh, in his thick West Virginia accent as a charcoal gray with no lights and looking like a, quote, old-fashioned chimney lamp, uh, which apparently you can Google and stuff looks kind of like UFOs. I want to just say real quick... um, 
the thought of doing a hour, two and a half hour long interview to me makes a part of my soul crawl into itself. That is so long. Yeah. I've been, I've been, li- I've literally been thinking about, so because we're moving to this, this every other week format, I want to try and incorporate some interviews this year. Yeah. Try is the operative word because the thought of even doing a half hour interview to me is like triggers my social anxiety in a way that I can't even begin to explain. There's, I think that'd be pretty easy, but I think I'm also good at public speaking. And the very funny thing to me is, um, <clears throat> like I've done public speaking in the past at like several different joints. I've been, I don't know if you know this, I've been paid to do public speaking before, but, uh, oh, wow. oh yeah. At, uh, like BOCES and other schools and shit like that. But, uh, so that doesn't bother me at all during manufacturing day. I'm giving a presentation. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be uh, 45 minutes. I'm winging it. I have no issues. It's going to be great. I put together a slide deck. No stress at all. I, like It's going to be fine. I can pull it off real easy. The other person that's talking with me, his name, first name is Tim. Mm-hmm. Tim the is a man na- Taylor. No, Tim is a naval officer and uh, came up to me the other day like, Oh, Brandon, I just, I like, I sent him my slide deck. He's like, Brandon, I don't know. Like, he just sent me the deck. I know what I'm going to do. Like, like, he's legit nervous. And I'm like, how can you be shot at and just be super chill? But you're like, these high schoolers, man, I don't know what's going to happen. Dude, dude, high schoolers? Like, I get, like, it's totally- They're savage. <laughs> They're savage. They love me, by the way, because they've seen, like... Uh, like I get that it's just very funny that different people from different life paths where you'd think would be totally chill in similar situations are not at all. Um, cause I've, uh, not given presentations to, but have been around other, uh, man- manufacturing day events. And, like kids love me, man. I don't know what it is. They're like, Oh, like, uh, they think I'm a cool guy. They don't know I'm a nerd. So whatever. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> they've also once I was standing on a uh, like an apple box at work to try for whatever reason and mm-hmm. uh, behind a cubicle, and I they like I had one kid exclaim, "Do you see how tall that man is?" Because I'm already um six <laughs> two, and standing on top of an apple box would put me at like I don't know I'll say it's a foot tall, so maybe I'd be like. Over seven feet, and they they did not know I was standing on something, and it was amazing. I loved it. Well, well, you're at least you're at least one one Smurf taller at that point because they're three apples high. Oh, okay. I did not know mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Well, it's Fun. a big it's it's a big part of their character. It is uh, <laughs> only part of their character. Some might say. Uh-huh. Well, also, if you know their name, you know what they're all about. Oh yeah. So. Uh, so probably one of the most curious statements that Woody made about his meeting with Cold was that, quote, And then Cold said to me, we will see you again. Then his voice trails off. Police Chief Ed Plum asked, do you really think you will see him again? And Darren Berger then answered, I think so. I believe I will. I don't know because that's what I am afraid of. I, uh, listen, I've I've got severe anxiety, right? Yes. This really kind of almost sounds like someone who has some kind of mental illness who doesn't know how to articulate it. Oh, yes. Uh, I don't want to, like, rip on him for it because that's not a thing to rip on, but it's really yeah. what it sounds like. It is. Uh, fill the air. I have had to pee for the last 58 minutes. All right. Well, wait, what? Yeah. You went before then. <laughs> Oh God! All right, let's see. Um, I guess I'll just open up Magic: The Gathering. Do, 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 do. All right, let's see. We got ourselves Magic: The Gathering Arena. They're preparing I'm the assets. Something about peeing. I don't know. Oh, all right. Plain deck standard. I have to cast twenty blue or green spells I'm or kill fifteen of my creatures decks how about wolf pack let's look at what the comp looks like hmm it's wicked wolf i'm not feeling 
Wild Burn Preserver. Do I have enough wild cards to get two more? Hmm. You know what, I'm actually? Done he's almost done peeing. Warren Preserver. Let's get two more of those. Let's drop two of the Wicked Wolves. Hmm. I don't know if I really need this Godless Shrine for this deck. Hmm. You know... This is rough. Oh, damn it. I'm coming back from peeing. Damn it. No, don't want to do that. Hmm. And we're done. It's huh? pretty oh. it's pretty great. Yeah. I yeah. was uh I was working on my wolf deck. Oh, were you? Okay. Yeah. I was just <laughs> just just fiddling around with it a little bit, trying to yeah. to work out some of the, the weirdness. Cut some of the so chat. real quick, I know it's yeah. white green, and I know we were well. We used to be in the middle of a podcast. Now this is just me and you time. Mm -hmm. What mechanics are you basing that around? Uh, Nightpack Ambusher and Tulsimir Friend of Wolves. So okay. the idea is Nightpack Ambusher uh, is plus one plus. I think it's plus one plus one to all wolves and werewolves. Yeah. Um, it spawns a wolf token every turn you don't cast a spell. Oh, okay. Um, it's also a flash-based card, meaning you can cast it on your opponent's turn. The other card is Tulsimir, Friend of the Wolves or whatever. It's an elf. Uh, it summons a 3-3 wolf token, and it has an ability that it every time a wolf token comes into the battlefield, you may have it fight another creature. Um, okay. You, basically, that's a lifelink fight, too, so you gain whatever its, its health points are, uh, it, its power is. So you're gaining life. Um, and if you get a card called Vivian's Arcbow, um, you can effectively cast without casting yeah. creatures. So you can, <clears throat> once you get the Vivian's Arcbow on the field and mm -hmm. five mana, um, you pretty much are just spending every turn churning through your deck to find the, the cards you need for the combo. And That's then once they hit the field, awesome. yeah. assuming they don't die to removal... Uh, you pretty much wipe the floor with the opponent at that point because they can't keep monsters on the field. So I love... Okay, so my two favorite mechanics, and I've got one deck that ties them both together, is uh, Lifelink and Proliferate. Mm -hmm. And they're... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to oh. fight you one day. I'm going to uh, work on a deck from all this new stuff uh, post-War of the Spark, and mm -hmm. we, we're, we're just going to fight. It'll have you opened any packs post War of the Spark? I have not. Is it awesome? Uh, so War of the Spark is still probably my favorite set to draft. Okay. Um, just because I get it mechanically. Yeah. Um, twenty twenty is more of like it's a core set, so it's not really super powerful. Uh, Eldraine is definitely a reset for the power creep, though. Okay. Because it's definitely more low end creatures and a few nice creatures. So yeah. it's trying to basically bring down the meta a little bit from being okay. so ridiculous. But um Eldraine has some Eldraine does have some really cool cards and it has a food mechanic, which is pretty fun. Oh now, wait, what's the food mechanic? Explain. Uh, Explain. Man, this is right in the middle of injured cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I, I'm actually into. Should we just so, have our own Magic the Gathering like sponsor podcast? <laughs> Honestly, Magic has been like f sponsoring everyone lately, so maybe, maybe we can get an episode <laughs> sponsored by Magic the Gathering. I don't know, because uh, ba basically, it, it sacrifices this artifact. You gain three life, two, oh. it, two mana, two mana, and a tap, and you sacrifice it, and you gain the life. Gotcha. Okay. Um. So you gain three life, rather. So. Okay. One of the cards is called Bake into a Pie. Nice. That's yeah. um, related to a rap song that I've been listening to that I forget the name of, but that's a tangent. Something by Travis Scott. I don't know. I just watched a Travis Scott doc. Anyway, after that interview, Darren Berger's life transformed drastically. Yes. And not for the better. Uh, the interview about Magic the Gathering in 1966. Yes. Uh, he changed jobs, uh, developed marital problems, clung to his church for a while, and then uh, came strange uh, visits 
from men dressed in black clothing, from whom Dernberger suspected to be some kind of a hidden government group of spies or even the mafia. He wasn't sure. Uh, they just spooked him, and they would arrive at his house uh, and ask him some simple questions. Some had to do with his UFO experience, and then men in black uh, acted in a threatening manner. Uh, so, he was 50 at the time all this happened? That's a little late, but that really does sound like somebody like coming to terms with like getting hit by their like like some mental illness. Yeah. Like yeah. it really it really does. Like I I uh, Yeah, like a lot like that yeah. that's like a cookie cutter for the stories I hear from people. Like even it's even close to my own story. Yeah. Like Uh all right. <laughs> this is less funny to me. Yeah. So nothing was as incredible as the return of Indrid Cold. At least this is what Woody claimed. He said that Cold visited him uh many times at his farmhouse in Mineral Wells. At one point Darren Burger came up with uh, missing for almost six months, and he said that it, he was with, quote, the aliens. The local population finally became skeptical. Uh, the sewing machine salesman's tale grew more and more far-fetched. Woody even claimed to have been impregnated. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if you're going to get to the story. Yeah. So Woody claimed to have been impregnated by the aliens in 1967. Uh, he stated to have been... Uh... <laughs> He seemed to have visited Cold's planet of Lanulos, where its residents walked around wearing no clothing. Nice. Uh, he then... <laughs> he said the aliens lived in a galaxy called uh, Ganymede, where uh, everything was peaceful and there was no war. People began to snicker. Still... <laughs> Still, there were odd flashing lights in the sky nightly, and the curiosity seekers stopped not only Woody's uh, modest farmhouse, but an area called Boggle Ridge. Not yeah, I'd, I'd probably stock Boggle Ridge just to figure out why it's called named after a board game. Mm hmm. Definitely. Uh, not far from Mineral Wells, where the aliens were claimed to land, uh, the ridicule came, or became too much for Woody with his family. He moved from the area and stayed away for decades, only returning in the 1980s, where he died in 1990. Woody was finally laid to rest at Mount Zion Cemetery in Mineral Wells, West Virginia. Why are there so many places called Mount Zion Cemetery? Like, I know why, but, like, that's such an unoriginal thing to name it. Because, like, yeah. the idea is, like, Zion's the city on the hill, yada, 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 ba 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 Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Keel was not a believer. Uh, no, you don't say. No. Uh, yeah. So it's mysterious why he would make it such a large part of the Mothman Prophecies book. Huge. Huge. Absolutely huge. He talks about it, and he whines about it for chapters. Oh, uh, see, I never read it. I learned about that through you. So I'm assuming it was bigger than it should have been. Yeah, way bigger than it should have been. He's... I think that Keel doesn't like it when someone comes up with a story yeah, other than himself mm -hmm. that's kind of close to the story he's telling. I don't think he likes that. Well, I don't think he liked that when he was still alive. Yeah. That's my hypothesis. Okay. Um, so yeah, the the uh, Mothman Prophecies movie, the character Gordon Smallwood is based upon Woody, but... The Wood County man most often appeared in a suit, not in overalls. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so John Keel hated him so much. Yes. That his hatred of Woody resulted in the movie version of Woody basically oh. being a bumpkin. Really? Okay. It, well, that's that's how I'm reading it. Like, is yeah. that what happened? Like, did John that's, Keel like so. suggest? You know what? He always was wearing overalls. Always, like, because he was still alive when that happened. I th yeah. think when Mothman Prophecies came out. I'm uh -huh. Not sure. So I'm wondering if if <laughs> 2002. 
So I'm wondering if John Keel had something to do with that. Maybe. Now I'm, now I'm curious. That's you can entirely keep, possible. You can keep reading while I do okay. this research. So a few elements to his story make it believable that initially something of an extraordinary, extraordinary nature happened to him. Uh, first of all, his account predates the Mothman sighting by 12 days, and what he would have had to have been a prophet to know what was about to happen next, making his story even more extraordinary. His family explains that they believe something of an otherworldly nature initially happened, but he added to his tale uh, to sell books uh, when he self-published a book called Visitors from Lanulos in 1971. Um so that's the end of the injured cold story right mm -hmm. here. I will say there are uh, three other injured cold sightings, none of which seem to have anything to do with injured cold and could just be sleep par paralysis or someone talking about any alien at all ever. Um, yeah. Injured cold is like... So I suggested injured cold because he's like weirdly linked to the Mothman le legend because of the fact that it happened near the same time and mothman is such like yeah mothman is such a presence that it's kind of encapsulated it, it it's it's got its own orbit yeah it's just picked stuff up and elevated it to a level that can't even begin to explain literally because it's such a popular cryptid oh, like yeah. like it's kind of a breakout cryptid too cuz like it's a heavy hitter for sure yeah compared to like comparatively to like Sasquatch or Nessie, there's so many less sightings of the Mothman, but it's so much more. It has such a powerful presence in our brain, so to yeah. speak. And I, I think probably the Mothman prophecies didn't help that. To be no, fair, no, not at all. So, because that was a big movie when it came out, I do remember that. So, but yeah. I, I don't know. Andrew Cold, uh, I do like the fact that he self-published a book in the true, tr the true like tradition of UFO sightings. -ies. Oh yes, yeah. But uh, yeah. <sighs> Anywho, this is a late podcast, so I think I'm going to do the plugs. <laughs> yeah, we're recording uh, atypically late. Yes, not a uh, weekend morning bright and early, but a weekday night. Yeah, so. <laughs> As always, if you like what you hear, uh, be sure to go to the our website, CryptopediaCast.com, where all the links we're about to sling at you are present. Um, our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter, also at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We also have a Patreon, which is linked in the show notes. Um, now that we're moved on to a... Uh, every other week schedule i'm going to try to be a little bit better about making sure our uh our weekly our monthly uh uploads go up well and hopefully i'll get some more of the um scps out there in the near future um additionally if you are in our highest tier the jackalope tier uh you get a little shout out every week and i think you did them last week so i think i'll do them this week uh our two sh our two current Jackalopes are Clay Sinclair. Clay Sinclair! I'm going to do it as well. But you can do mic. it as well. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, and uh, Marty Von Party. Marty Von Party! Yeah. Uh, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Doesn't matter where you do it. Um, spread the word if you enjoy it and you think you know people who might like it. I can recognize that we are a bit of an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely fair. Uh, but, you know, if you have people who are interested in uh, skeptical comedic takes on the paranormal, we're your, uh, your guys, I guess. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in, especially now, because now I actually have time to read books. Ooh. I'm reading two books currently, and one of them, I actually know the person who wrote it through Twitter. So, Oh, you nerd. And I've had conversations with them on Twitter. So that's going to be interesting. Nice. <laughs> that's all there is to it yeah uh you could find me on instagram at donkey underscore hands my website is boyerb.com my email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com and my twitter is at crypto brandon 
As always, I'm on Instagram at Mew2057. If you want to watch, look at way too many pictures of uh, just various toys that are around my house. Um, on Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. If you want to hear my latest hot take on something that doesn't matter. Uh, my website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs> Is so hard finding sources for this. <laughs> I can totally believe that, <laughs> Brandon. After I after I read the Mothman prophecies, I was like, "Oh man, Brandon's gonna have a rough time." <laughs> like they all said the same thing, and anything with any new information, I was like, "This just is not relevant to anything." It like he's not even tangential. They're just <sighs> tying things together. He's such. He's most alien stories are like that. That that's yeah. the hardest thing about doing alien stories from our perspective because most of the time you have to make like 30 leaps of logic to even begin to get to the story yeah no it's it's a thing (laughs)